What's up YouTube? Getting ready to do a 30 gallon water change. Quick and easy water changes. You want to get yourself a brood on wheels. That way you can wheel the, um, the water next to your tank whenever the water is ready. Uh, this is the five stage RODI unit. Uh, for now I'm storing my unit right here under the cabinet. Takes me about no more than a minute to install it. Just place it there. Connect my water line, my waste line into the drain, and then my product line. Uh, in the future, I will be installing this permanently in the garage, but for now, quick and easy, I'm just storing it down there in the cabinet. Now, you can also install it permanently under the cabinet if you want. I uh, just want to give you guys a couple of tips on things that I think that are important for you to have on your RODI unit to make sure you are making good quality water. Um, one of the first things you should have is the, uh, the pressure gauge there. The, um, you want to run it at nothing less than 50 PSI. Uh, mine runs at about 70 PSI. Now the good thing also is that if you know that your gauge runs at a certain PSI and then you see a su sudden drop on pressure, uh, the gauge is just letting you know then that your sediment uh, filter here is getting clogged and you need to change it. Another good thing to have is the uh, TDS meter. Uh, the TDS meter uh, here on this la on the last unit, it's gonna let you know what the TDS is going in to your DI resin. In my case, mine going into this last stage here is about two, three TDS, and then coming out should be at zero, and that's your product water so you want your product water to be at zero that's the purest um, now when the DI resin starts depleting that's the good thing about the TDS meter it's going to start changing instead of zero you're gonna start seeing a TDS at about one for example right there you see it changing back and forth that means that I need to start getting ready to change my DI resin is getting depleted uh, in my case, I like changing it immediately as soon as I start seeing a 1 TDS. There's people that let it go till about 5 TDS. Um, as soon as I see mine, I like changing it immediately. Now, the TDS meter is also going to help you out in uh, noticing when your, your membrane might be needing a, a change or something's wrong with the membrane. If your TDS coming into your DI resin is about three and all of a sudden you see that coming into your DI resin your TDS is about 50, 80 or you see a big spike then you know something's wrong with your membrane or you need to change it. So that's one of some of the benefits of the TDS meter there. Now you don't want a lot of TDS going into this last stage here because your DI resin is going to get depleted immediately. It's going to get depleted quick and you're going to be spending a lot of money on DI resin. So you want a low TDS going here into your DI resin and it's going to, that way it's going to last long. Um, so now another way that it's going to help you out um, your, your keep your resin from depleting quickly uh, initially when you first turn the unit on you're gonna see that your TDS here instead of being three is gonna mine comes in starting up the unit comes in at about a hundred to eighty uh, and that's usually when you first start the system until it starts coming down all the way to three but the, that initial high TDS it's gonna affect your resin so what I do is I disconnect this this line here, the water going into the, the resin, and I just let it drain for a couple of minutes until the system runs through for a couple of minutes. Then I plug it in and I check, and then it's usually at around five, and then it drops to three, which is a lot better and it's going to save you 
some resin. Uh, now you can also install a three-way valve here with another tube uh, so that way you can switch it back and forth so that way you don't have to be unplugging this and putting it back in but for now that's the way I do it to save me some resin. Um, another good thing is to have a, a flush, flush valve that way you can whenever you start making water or and then after you are finished you want to flush your membrane for about five minutes and that's just gonna um, expand your the lifespan on your on your membrane usually they say these membranes last about three years and then lastly your carbon blocks they say they last about six months to twelve uh, if you want to know if you're not changing them too early what you can do is test for chlorine uh, coming out of your wastewater, uh, but the best way to test it is um, coming out of the last carbon block, the water line. You disconnect that and test for chlorine coming out of that carbon block. If there is chlorine, then that's telling you that you need to change your carbon blocks. You don't want any chlorine going into the membrane here because it would kill the membrane quickly. Um, the only other advice would be to check for chloramines and for that you're probably going to have to check with the uh, facility, um, your water facility. Uh, if they do use chloramines, you want to get the, uh, the filter, the carbon filter for, for chloramines. Um, because if there is chloramines, uh, you're going to be introducing, and you don't have a filter for chloramines, you're going to be introducing ammonia into your your product water and we don't want to introduce that into our tanks now the um, only reason why I say these things are important is because I, I know people that have their units um, they don't have a TDS meter or a gauge they think they're producing good quality water or well, not only that but they don't know that one of their filter needs change already and in reality they notice start noticing something is wrong whenever they start seeing their tanks going green. So having these little things uh, will help you out determine in advance if there's a filter needing change or if your membrane went wrong or if your DI resin is depleting. Um, uh, the only other thing I have here is the, uh, the shutoff valve which I'll be using when I install it in my garage. Uh, and that's going to be connected with a float valve that's going to go inside here the, uh, the tank it's almost done and then um, that shuttle valve does it will shut the, uh, the water down and it would also shut down the uh, the waistline so that's about it guys some things to consider on having on your RODI unit